around till yesterday, but it's been on my heart for a couple months now. Uh, I found it while reading through my Bible, actually. In my daily Bible reading, started in Genesis, and found out something very interesting about Lot. I think it applies to pretty much all of us. If you want me to turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 13. Lift up his eyes and come. All the same as yours, he said, out with warm waters everywhere, so the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even at the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to the door. Then Lot took him, all the same as yours, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abraham dwelt in the Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the plain, and pitched his tent for Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners, which the Lord exceeded. So, Lot and Abraham were traveling together for quite some time, but they got to be two very great men and decided that they couldn't live together without striking them, and so they decided that they were going to go one way or the other. So Abraham gave Lot here a choice which way he was going to pick, and Lot saw the, the land over towards Sodom was, it was very well watered land, it was very nice, and it would have been a good pick. It would have made for a good place to live. And, a lot of things that he could have done with it. But the first mistake he made was as soon as he set the tent, he pitched it for Sodom. Yep. And that's what us Christians do. There's sin in this world, and we choose to look right at it instead yep. of living in the world that God gave us. We can be witnesses to the sinners, but we shouldn't just watch them and be jealous of them and want to live with them. Amen. We should be separated from them and be different. Right. That's right. Well, a lot of times as Christians, we just go up to them and then we start moseying on in and no. then all of a sudden we're in there. And then eventually Lot moved in, which led to him barely getting out of there alive and his wife being turned to salt. Yep. And that that's just consequences of your sin. The more that you look at something, the more you're going to want it. No. And that's that's right. Everything, whether you're a Christian or not. So, he sat there every day when he walked out of his tent, he'd see Sodom and Gomorrah. And he'd want to be like them. And the Bible says in, thir- in verse 13 that, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceeding them. And then it just separates them off for a minute. So, we know that they've just been sinning to the Lord a lot, and everyone knew it. But Lot still chose to watch him every morning when he came out of his tent. He'd Go out there, and that's what he'd look at. He'd see their sins, and then he'd say, "Look, those guys are awful." And then he'd see them in the light. And that's the normal. No. And then he said, "Well, maybe I should get a little closer." So he moved a little closer, and then he done it again. He said, "Well, even from up here, these things look even worse." And then eventually he said, "Well, they ain't too bad," and he moved right on in. Yep. No. He even tried to give his two daughters away. No. Mama. And thought just because. He wanted to live there. No. He didn't want to go. He left, he left, the, left the angels in his house because he was afraid of, of what the men would do to him. So he was very aware of what they were doing outside of no. him. He knew them very well, and that's what us Christians want. No. We, we should be able to go out and preach to the world, but we shouldn't be caught up to the Amen. Right. You can hear all the things that the world is doing, but you shouldn't put them in your mind. You shouldn't meditate on the things that the world is doing. When you go out and you witness to somebody, you shouldn't ask them about their favorite drug that they take. You shouldn't be asking them what sins they do and trying to replicate it. You should be a lot different from them. Yep. As a Christian, that's what we should do. Now, if you would turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 39. Right here in the story of Joseph, Joseph was told he had his own brother. And eventually, well, after he got there, they saw that he was a wise man, and Pharaoh and they set him over. So, well, actually, Pharaoh's uh-huh. top. And 
left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Verse 6. And he has left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save for bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. It came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with him. He refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wants not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, and neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? It came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie with Lie by her, but to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went to the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house that were with him. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand, and fled and got his house. Joseph, he, he struggled with the same thing. He was there, and he saw that sin every day. But he don't know what us Christians should do. He, should, he ran from it. He didn't meditate on it. Right. He knew it was wrong, so he didn't partake in it. That was a wicked woman, just like the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Amen. He sat there every day and he listened to it. And then eventually it tried to get him. Because he was nearby to it. Which is what the world will do to us. It will try to rope us in. It will try to... It will tell us, well, you can do it just this once. It will be fine. You can come and you can do it for us. And you can see if you like it. And if you like it, you can stay. And it says that Joseph fled. And that's what we should do. We should be clean from it. Amen. Not, we don't need to walk away. Amen. We don't need to take some baby steps until we get away. Yep. We need to flee from Amen. it. Yep. We, need, we need to run. We need to act like we're in a race. Because we are in a race. Right. Our whole life is a race. Yep. We should finish our race. Amen. And the way to finish our race is to stay in touch with God. Stay yep. in the will of God. Which you can only do by reading God's word and right. praying with him. Yep. You can't just go day by day and you read your Bible, but before you read your Bible, you get on Facebook. No. You can't do that. No. Amen. When you wake up, that should be the first thing in your mind. Amen. You should either pray or read your Bible. That's good preaching. And when you're reading your Bible, you should do these things distracted. Yep. You, should, you should focus on it. Because if you're, if you're reading your Bible, but all you're doing is thinking about what you could be doing in the world, yep. you're not really reading your Bible. Right. Amen. You're doing a task that set before you. It's not it's not like you're even accomplishing anything. No. Sometimes what we do is we try to we say we gotta get through these chapters. We gotta we have to read this or or well we don't know what happened. We just gotta read them because it'll make us a better person. But it won't. Reading it won't make you a better person. Reading it and understanding it will help you. No. You can't no. just you can't if you see a billboard and it says something in a different language, you don't just read it every day and then go, that makes total sense. I love that billboard. I'm going to live by it. Yeah. That's not what you do. And when you don't read the Bible, it's like a complete different language to you. Yeah. You hear people talking to it, and you say, and they ask you, have you read through the book of Jonah? And you say, yes, I've read through the book of Jonah. And they ask, what happened to it? And you can't answer. Because yeah. you didn't actually read through it. Yeah. You looked at it. Yeah. Joseph was in, in the will of God, and he was fleeing from it. That's what we should be doing. Amen. Yeah. And if you read, if you don't read the Bible, you're standing still. Yeah. If you don't pray, you're standing still. Right. If all you do is, even before it is, you get on there and you see what everyone else is doing, you see what other friends at school are doing, you see what your friends that work out in the world are doing, you see what they're doing, how they're acting, how they're behaving, how they're treating people, and then you like, you like their posts and you think, wow, they're such, they're such cool people. I wish I could be as popular as them. And then you go and read your Bible. No. How is that? How is that helping you? No. It isn't. Right. You can read it as much as you want, but if you don't take it to heart, then you do not really read it. Right. You can pray as much as you want, but if you just sit down there and you say, "Oh Lord, Lord, um, yeah, Lord, okay, that's my prayer for the morning," no. and then go about your day, you didn't really do anything. Once again, you're just sitting there and you're doing what you think you should be doing, but you're not actually doing it. No. It shouldn't be what we think that we have to do, it should be what we want to do. As a Christian, it should be we want to be doing the Lord God. Joseph was wanting to do his master's work. He wasn't wanting to participate in these wicked sins. But Lot 
Lot wasn't. Lot was stuck on the idea that he had to. He had to know what they were doing. He had to want to do what they were doing. He had to see them and he had to be, be there with them. He had to be as popular as they are and what they do. And he had to do it. And it'll, anytime you do something like that, it'll find you out. Every time. Your sin will always find you out. Amen. It doesn't matter how good you start writing it. It, it doesn't matter. Lot was a, probably a far ways off when looking at Sodom and Gomorrah. But that sin is changing from waking up every morning and walking out those tent doors and looking at it. Not he watched it. He, it's not like he just saw it. He could have planted a mighty garden there. So it was like a garden of the Lord. That means that he could have bountiful fruit. I, I think that if Abraham would have got that size, he wouldn't have fell into the same sin. Yeah. That's I right. That Abraham... Abraham was a lot more in touch with God than Lot was. Right. Abraham had to save Lot a few times. And he was talking to God, but when you read about Lot, you never really read that he was talking with God. Nope. You know that you know that people knew of him. He must have been a good guy. The, the Bible tells us in the New Testament that it was, he was just. Yep. He called him just Lot. But he's still found the same sin. So no matter how great you think you are, the better you think you are, the more likely you are to fall into these sins. Yeah. If you think that, well, I'm on top of this Bible reading. I'm, I'm praying every day. I, I can take this one day off. If you think, I'm reading, I'm reading so well, I can read these three chapters in two minutes. It doesn't help you. Right. It's your own arrogance. It's... It's setting yourself righteous in your own eyes. It's not helping you walk with the Lord. It's not helping you do anything. And I struggle with this a lot because where I made it a point to myself that I was going to read. But sometimes I get in there and I'm tired. And before I go to bed, I'll read. And I'll sit there and I'll think, well, do I really need to really pay attention during this last chapter? Or can I just lay here and maybe go to sleep? But that's just wrong. That's I struggle with that a lot. And Travis is so good at that. He hasn't ever talked to me about it, but I go to his house and he's like, okay, I need to stop doing this. I need to go and read. While he's still awake. And yeah. It really helps me. And we should be, when Lot came out of that tent door, he should have been looking for the righteous thing, the yeah. good thing. He could have set up an altar by his house and been looking at him. He could have walked out there and praised the Lord every morning. But instead, he walked out there and he looked at Sodom and Gomorrah. He was stuck on that, just like I'm stuck on saying Sodom and Gomorrah over and over again. <laughs> but he, he, he looked at it and he contemplated it. And if we look at, as soon as you start contemplating something, you're going to do it. You don't do it when you act it out, it's not when you do it. When you think about it and find a way to do it, yep. when you meditate on it, yep. you've already done it. Yep. You've already said in your heart that I'm going to do it. Yep. Even if you don't end up doing it, you've done it in your own mind. That's right. right. Which is, will still hold you back. Right. You'll still think of it. Every time you think of that thing that you were going to do, right. you'll think of how you were going to do it. How it was going to happen. You'll think of the sins that you were going to do just to do it. You'll fall out of the will of God just by thinking of it. No. Yeah. So, if you, but if you dedicate your heart to the Lord, if you read and study the Bible and pray like you should, you can keep yourself from that. Amen. Which you can't keep yourself from any of it. You can pray and you can ask God to keep you from it. Amen. That's the only thing any of us can do. We can't do it by any of our own will. We can't do it by ourselves. None of us can. Many have tried. All of them fail. Because yeah. the only person that ever done right by himself was Jesus. And he wasn't even by himself. He still prayed to God. He still asked him to take the punishment from him that for the people. He's let this cup pass from him. But I'm glad that he, he took that punishment and that he was the only one that could. Because as soon as you even if you're the size of Jackson, Jackson, you ever lied before? You ever told a lie? Yeah. Okay. That's what See, Jackson, Jackson's even told a lie. And he's, he's hardly old enough to read. No. 
I don't think he can read, actually. But when he, he's lied, he's committed sin, and he doesn't even have that opportunity to get in the Word. No. But if you're around them, we should be setting ourselves up for an example, which we all fell at. No. We can't keep ourselves from sinning. We can't do it. We can't even make ourselves a perfect image. God can make us a better image, but we're still going to fail. When I look around at the church and see the people, Uncle Chuck and Uncle Matt, Pastor Travis, David, I remember Brother Oliver, I think it's my dad. I even think of Rob back there. Yeah. We go to the gym and Rob always tells me, remember Cameron, it's, you can't do this by yourself. you got to remember what God can do for you. Amen. I've heard Rob tell me about his past yeah. and how that he thought he was a big shot. He thought that he could do it by himself. And he, he ended up getting really hurt over it. And eventually he knew that he had to call upon the Lord. And I don't want to fall away like that. No. I don't want to get to the point where I think I'm the biggest and the best. I don't want to get to the point where I think I should be the I should be the one getting credit for these things. I want to get to the point where I look around and I think, wow, these people around me are great influences. I hope I can be I hope I can influence them. Mm. I want to get to the point where I can when somebody mentions a Bible story, I can I can talk about it. I want to get to the point where when somebody talks about a Bible story, I can mention a minor detail that I found in my own reading. I can find the things that are exceptional to me. Find what I want. Find what matters to me most. And I don't want it to be anything outside of the Bible or out of the Word of God. I like church, and I like boxing. But if I had to choose over church and boxing, I'd always choose church. Amen. Because you can't go... Can't go and get punched in the face and then think, this is so much better than church. Well, I'm so happy I'm here rather than being in church. Like this concussion I just got, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. And then you go to church and you hear somebody, they stir your heart and they tell you what you should be doing, and you think, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't want to be doing that. I don't care if it helped me. I'd rather live in my sin than repent of it. And we've all done that. Sadly, except for Kenton, he's shaking his head. <laughs> Kenton is more holier than now. <laughs> but we've all done it, and we continue to do it. Like last night, we were sitting there, and Kenton said, I gotta read my Bible. I'm like, okay. And then we stayed up till like 2 o'clock in the morning, and he still hadn't read his Bible yet because we were. We were reading different places of the Bible. He was talking to me about the things that he learned last week to go into a Bible or a camp or something. And he was telling me all the things that could help me. And I thought, I thought that that was great. I, that was, I was thinking to myself this morning that, wow, we've had such a great year of camp. Then I remembered that it was Monday and it just started. Fifty <laughs> percent of the people didn't show up. Yeah. But that one night was enough that I got a lot out of it. Amen. And I want every night to be like that. I want Amen. when I read, I want to see the things Amen. rather than push through it. Yeah. I got notes here, but <laughs> we should be more like Joseph and less like Lot. No. I think that Joseph had a one. He didn't have the scriptures with him, but he talked to God. No. No. Even if you, even if you get <clears throat> somehow don't have time to read, you wake up late, your alarm didn't go off. You can pray on your way to work. You can pray on your way to school. When you're there, instead of in, indulging in what they're doing, when they're sinning out by you. Looking at bad things and talking bad, you shouldn't go out and talk to them. You should be there praying. Yeah. You can go out and talk to them, but you should be a witness for them. Just tell them what they're doing is not right and how to be safe. And what's, I fail at a lot. I go to the gym, but I don't really put a good testimony out for us. Not all the time, anyways. Um, and that burns my heart. But here recently... 
guy from the guy from the gym has been asking me a lot about what it means to be a Christian. He wants to know a lot more about church. He wants he's had bad experiences with church, but he's he's even contemplating coming to church. Yeah. Yeah. And it stirred my heart that we go out there and we can set ourselves up for testimony like that. We can talk about it around us and not be ashamed of it and then they'll come to you. You don't need to go to them. You don't have to go and dwell in Sodom just to get the people of Sodom saved. Yeah. You can be outside of it and people gravitate towards you if you're in the will of God. Amen. You can talk about it freely. If you're open about how you feel and Amen. about your testimony, you can go outside and you can shout it. You can talk to people about it. You can just mention it in every conversation that Amen. you can. And people will want to know more. Right. People may not be interested about a certain sport. They might not care, but if they hear you talking about the Bible frequently, they'll ask you what denomination you are. They'll ask you where you go to church at. They'll ask you, eventually they'll ask you, how do I get saved? Just by setting yourself up, you don't have to, a lot of us fail at talking to people. We can't just go out and talk to people. It's recently that I've seen a lot of young people that struggle with going out and talk to people. And I'm one of them. It's, it's hard for us now. It's like we don't want to talk to each other. We'd rather message each other. Yeah. It's, well, I posted it on Instagram. Why didn't somebody see it and get saved? Yeah. But we don't need to talk to people. If you carry yourself like a godly man, somebody will say that man's different. If you carry yourself like a godly lady, they'll say that lady's different. Amen. We've been in stores, and my sister's been wearing skirts, and they'll ask them if they're Pentecostal or yeah. if they go to church somewhere. <laughs> I know it's Pentecostal ain't the best, but it does bring up the topic of church. Yeah. And that happens a lot more to my sisters, mostly because I don't walk around in skirts. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of you out there might. I don't know. Caleb might. He goes to two groups. I saw him in a April. <laughs> to a skirt from I was very just pleased we were going to youth conference and we stopped in there. Kid was the one thing we went for. And as soon as I seen Kid in there, I realized that we won't be able to go to these things forever. We won't be able to get those good messages, but we can still be around each other. And Kid has probably been one of the biggest lights in my life. Every time you're down, Kid will come to you and he'll say, What's wrong, buddy? Yeah. And he say nothing, he goes, oh, okay, I'm going to sit here until you tell me what's wrong. And then you think, I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> and then you get, he ends up praying with you, and he has to talk to you. And Pastor Alex will do the same thing. He'll look at you and go, are you okay? And if you say no, he'll ask you again in 10 minutes. Where Kurt gets it from. <laughs> you can be around Chuck, and Chuck will come in over and pat you in the back and tell you to cheer up. Which is, means a lot for Chuck because he doesn't really tell you to cheer up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> My dad comes in from, he, he'll be working all day, he'll come in, and if he sees me down, he'll come over to me and ask what's wrong. He wants to talk to me about mm -hmm. the godly things. Anytime yeah. I mention a problem to him, he gives me a scripture for it. Amen. Tells me what I should do. And I don't see how that could have been affecting any of Lot's life. Yeah. Abraham must have been doing those things for him. Yeah. But it takes two to make them things happen. you got to be able to hearken to the people around you. Amen. The good witnesses in your life. There's a lot here. All, all these older men, all these adults here, if you have any questions about the Bible, they, they can tell you the answer and they might lose. You, if you have any doubts about your salvation, they can lead you to the Lord. You shouldn't be doubting your salvation anyway. Kenneth Shoot told, told me three years ago, and I was dealing with doubt. At that time, I didn't tell anyone because I thought it made me less of a Christian. But I was sitting there, and I knew I couldn't. I knew that God had called me to preach, but I wasn't going to surrender myself because I didn't know if I was saved at that point. And Kenneth got up and he told us that when the devil whispers in your ear, it's always a what if. Yeah. It's always a what if you're not saved. 
when the Lord, and then he said, when the Lord talks to you, it's always, you're not saved. It's, you should be there. That You should know you say you're saved. You would know, because the Lord will tell you, you're not saved. Or he'll tell you, you are saved. But the devil only gives him what is. In the, in the Garden of Eden, he didn't say to Eve that God didn't say that. He said, did you say that? Yep. And he does it in every one of our life. He, That's right. He's been there since man's been there. And he still has the same tricks. The way to block yourself from these tricks is you read the Bible and you learn them. It's like when you... No, y'all don't box. That's kind of really crazy. But when you're boxing, you have... You go against the same people and you notice things and it helps you get better. You learn that you need to keep your hands up and you need to slip under the punches or slip beside them. You learn that you shouldn't be getting hit with the same thing over and over again. Yep. Yep. And your coach is a lot like um, a godly person in your life. Will They'll teach you how to not do it. Yeah. They can show you. So a lot of things that you can handle on your own. But it's a lot easier to think about. Just because you can carry something that's 100 pounds and say, oh, well, I made it here. It isn't the same as having somebody help you when you get there twice as fast. Yep. And our burdens are a lot heavier than that. He's helped you. He'll carry them for you. He won't even, he won't even help you carry them. He'll do it all for you. All you need to do is call him his name and ask him to save you. And this wasn't a salvation message, but maybe it is. Um, but if you're dealing with those things, then you should know that trusting him is the greatest thing that you do in your life. Amen. It's the only thing worth doing. Amen. You can't, just because you make a lot of money, just because you have the best car, like you go and buy a Toyota Corolla for $1,200, you think that you're top of the world now. You go over there and you tell everyone about your new car. <laughs> and you think you're just the best. You, none of that matters if, you, if you're not saved. Mm. None of them matters if you are saved. You should, you should fully commit to the rule of God. I did that last week, actually, at youth conference. We went up there and we were sitting there and I told myself, I'm going to get something out of these messages. I told myself that I was going to listen and I was going to pay attention. And then the first message, he gets up there and tells me about, he says, I know there's a person out there that hasn't fully surrendered to preach. And I'm thinking, no, you don't. You don't know me. Then <laughs> <laughs> I start to cry. And then he says, this message is for you. And then I'm thinking, I don't even need the message now. Let me go up to the altar. I spent the whole time praying that message. I don't even remember what it was about, which is awful, but... I don't remember what it was about because I was sitting there praying. I want to I wanna put my life, I want to surrender it for you, Lord. And I need, I want to go up there and have someone help me with this. Because I don't want to do it by myself and, and doubt myself. I want to know that somebody walked me through it. And I go up there, I didn't even have to ask anybody. I didn't even get out of the aisle. And Bob comes over to me and goes, what's in your mind, Cameron? And I go, I don't want to preach, Travis. But I, I should. I should preach. And I should surrender. And he goes, well, how about we pray? And I'm thinking, that's why I knelt down here. And so I start praying, and then I start crying more and more. And then next thing I know it, I'm fully surrendered. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to do great things. And then instantly, instantly I look over and I see something. And I, my mind wanders. Yeah. I miss I missed the rest of that day uh, thinking about something I shouldn't have been thinking about. Mm -hmm. And it was right after something did happen. And then that's when this really came back to mind. I told I told Angelia about it um, a couple months ago. I told her that, wow, I was reading my Bible and I found this thing. Somebody should really preach it. And she's standing there and she goes, why don't you preach it? And I think, um, because I don't preach anywhere. And she says, what about a camp? And I said, I, well, I don't even know if I'll be preaching at camp. And she said, well, if you preach at camp, you should preach it. And here I am. Amen. We're preaching it. I was at the beginning anyway. Bless you.
But all these things are what Lot didn't do. Lot destines, destined himself for failure as soon as he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Right. As soon as he sat there and had that view, he destined himself to fall into it. He knew what he was going to do long before he done it. He knew he wanted to move in there. He could have set it completely away from it, built an altar, had a garden. Abraham, he could have been a seed like Abraham. He could have made himself a great mighty people, but he didn't. He didn't call upon the Lord and ask him for anything. And when the Lord even saved him out of Sodom, he still said that he wasn't going to do what they wanted to do. He still said, well, there's a town nearby, why should I go up to the mountain? He said, this town over here, it's it's not it's not like Sodom. It's, it's a town. I know that it's only the Lord up on, on the mountain, but there's other people in this town. And I like to talk to other people rather than be with you, God. Mm -hmm. And then they eventually decided to go up on the mountain. But, if, but after you miss the chance, no. you miss the chance. Yeah. If you miss the bus, it doesn't turn around and come get you. The bus doesn't depend whether you're on it or not. It depends whether you get on it while it's there. And that's... I, I don't want to get to heaven and see all the things that I missed doing. Amen. All the things that I missed because I said, well, I'll do them in a year. I don't want to get to heaven and see all the rewards I could have got, but didn't because I was too selfish in my own needs. I don't want to get up there and see people casting crowns at Jesus' feet and then look over and I only have one. I want to be up there and I want to be able to do things right. I want to be able to say, when the Lord tells me to go and witness somebody, I want to go and witness to them. I don't want to say, well, you know, they're kind of weird. They might not get saved. You know, it's stupid. I want to say, well, they might get saved. And yep. that's another one that can live to God. Honestly. I look at somebody now, after last week and hearing them, that is, I look at someone and say, there's the next preacher. I look at someone and say, there's a missionary. I look at somebody and I say, that is going to be a great man of God. Even if he just works in the church, he's going to inspire so many people to be saved. And I just want to be more of a witness for him. I want to be able to flee from the sin. I don't want to be sitting there Day by day, you ask these things and then you fall into them. Day by day, make the same mistakes over and over again. I want to be able to say, I've been encountering this thing a lot lately, and I'm going to do it no more. I've been encountering this thing a lot lately, and it doesn't even bother me. I want, I've been seeing this thing a lot lately, but I know nothing about it. I've been seeing this, but I've been trying to be a witness to it. These people come up to me and they they ask, well, how do I get saved? I don't want to be able to stand up there and say that. I don't want to be over there when they ask a question, well, did, is there any real reason for us to read the Old Testament? I don't want to say, I don't know. Amen. That's my biggest fear of saying, I don't know. <coughs> I hate when someone walks up to me and they want an answer so bad that they don't take I don't know for an answer. They ask you, do you know where this person is? No, I don't know. Are you sure? Were they over there? Did you see them that way? I don't know. Well, do you not pay attention? I've been working in the shop with my dad, and he'll say, have you seen my tool? And I'll say, I don't know. He said, well, I had it right there. And I said, I don't know. I haven't been out here in a couple of days. And then he goes, well, I really need to find that tool or I can't be working on it. And I'm, I'm looking around for it, and I'm trying to search my memory. Have I seen this tool? <laughs> I, I want to be in touch with God where when, he, when somebody asks me something about the Bible, I can say, yeah, I have scripture for that. Amen. I can tell you about it. I can witness to you. I can help you to grow stronger in the Lord. That's what you want. That's my main goal to Every time I ask Caleb something, or ask Bob something, or ask Pastor Travis something, they always seem to have an answer for me. And I look at them and I think, they, they, must, they must be great. 
And then I realized what I was doing. I'm idolizing men here. I, I want to be able to people to look at me and say, if I have a problem, I can ask them. If I have a problem, maybe he has scripture for it. I don't want to be sitting there and then I'm not somebody's choice. I don't want to be sitting in a room of people and they ask everybody, how do I do this? And then people say, I don't know. I don't want to say I don't know. Ken was talking about in Job last night about a life you live in, about how the um, feel bad and the other one that have names that don't matter. <laughs> um, but he was asking me about those, and I honestly said, I, I don't know. So what we done was we spent and we looked at it, and we studied it together. And then I showed him something that I learned about um, Job sitting out with sitting not in the first chapter, and then in the second chapter he he's sitting out with his lips. I don't. I want to be able to show people that and say, "Isn't that great?" And then agree with me. I want to be a witness for people, and then and then. I just want to say that if you haven't trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you should do that. Because no matter what you seem to think in this world, how how hot it is, it's a lot hotter than hell. How how bad it is, it's a lot worse than hell. How much you suffer up here, it's a lot worse than hell. And we had a demonstration yesterday that Pastor Travis showed us about all you got to do is come up and take the gift. You have to accept it, and that's it. And if that's you, you don't need to put it off. The more you put it off, the more likely you are not. If the Lord's burning your heart about anything today, find someone to talk to about it. Or pray on your own. That's all I have. Amen. 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 Am